Hello and welcome to a UTM calculus video on antiderivatives. In mathematics, there are many important operations that also have a reverse operation. For example, we recently learned about differentiation. Its inverse operation is called anti-differentiation. In a derivative problem, you would start with a function, say f of x, and you're trying to find its derivative, f prime of x, using the differentiation rules. In an antiderivative problem, you are given the derivative and you're trying to find out a corresponding function. For example, you might start with the velocity function of an object and you're trying to figure out a corresponding position function. In that case, you would need to take the antiderivative of the velocity function. So let's start by taking a closer look of the definition of an antiderivative. The definition of an antiderivative is as follows. A function, capital F, is called an antiderivative of a function, small f, on an interval i if the derivative of capital F is equal to small f of x for all x in that interval. As an example, let's have a look at the function f of x equals x squared, and let's try to find the antiderivative of this function. If you knew capital F of x, you would need to differentiate to find small f of x. But now we are given small f of x. So we need to think of some function so that if you were to differentiate it, you would end up with x squared. For example, 1 over 3 x cubed would work. This is because if you were to differentiate 1 over 3 x cubed, you would end up with x squared. Therefore, this is an antiderivative. However, this is not the only antiderivative of x squared. For example, you could differentiate 1 over 3 x cubed plus 1 the derivative of that is also x squared. Or, for example, 1 over 3 x cubed plus 3. If you differentiate this, you also get x squared. Similarly, for example, 1 over 3 x cubed minus 1.5. If you differentiate this, you also get x squared. This means that all of these are antiderivatives of x squared. This means that the general antiderivative of x squared is 1 over 3 x cubed plus c where c could be any constant. Let's think about what this means graphically. For example, consider the function 1 over 3 x cubed plus 1, and the function 1 over 3 x cubed plus 3, and the function 1 over 3 x cubed minus 1.5. Looking at the graphs, we see that these are essentially the same graphs. They're just shifted up or down. This means that they have the same slope at the same points so that they have the same derivative. For every differentiation rule that you've seen, there is a corresponding anti-differentiation rule. This means that you can check your work for an indefinite integral by differentiating to see if you get back to your original function. We'll see how in just a minute. But first, let's take a look at some basic rules for indefinite integrals. The set of all antiderivatives of a function is called the indefinite integral. The notation we use for this is the following. The indefinite integral of f of x dx is equal to capital F of x plus c. If and only if the derivative of capital F of x is equal to small f of x. The preceding example could be written as follows. The, the indefinite integral of x squared dx is equal to 1 over 3 x cubed plus c. Let's have a look at a few properties of the indefinite integral. The first one is called the power rule. The indefinite integral of x to the power of n dx is equal to x to the power of n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus c, where c is any constant. Notice that n cannot be equal to negative 1 because that would give us division by 0. Therefore, we have a special rule when n is equal to negative 1. This indefinite integral is equal to ln of the absolute value of x plus a constant. Now let's have a look at an example. If we want to evaluate the integral of cube root of x, we would start by rewriting this as x to the power of a third. Now we can use the power rule. We would increase the exponent by 1, and then we would divide by the new exponent. This was simplified to be x to the power of 4 over 3, all divided by 4 over 3, plus a constant. Dividing by 4 over 3 is the same as multiplying by 3 quarters and this will simplify to become 3 times the fourth root of x cubed, all divided by 4, plus a constant. Here's our next property. It's called the constant rule. 
If k is some constant and f is a function, then the indefinite integral of that constant times the function is equal to the constant times the indefinite integral of f of x. Now let's have a look at an example. If you want to evaluate the indefinite integral of 10 divided by square root of x dx, then we would start by taking out the constant 10 in front of the integral, and then we would use the power rule. Again, we would increase the exponent by 1 and divide by the new exponent. Then we would simplify this through several steps, and eventually we would get 20 times the square root of x plus c. Here are a few more properties of the indefinite integral. You should know that the integral of e to the power of x dx is equal to e to the power of x plus c. Also, if you have a constant, then the integral of that constant is k times x plus c. And if you have two functions, f and g, and you want to integrate either the sum or the difference of them, then you can integrate f of x and add or subtract the integral of g of x. Here is another example. If you want to evaluate the integral of 4x cubed plus 2x minus 1 dx, we would start by separating these into three separate integrals. In each of these you would take out a constant and then evaluate them using the power rule. As usual you would increase the exponent by 1 and divide by the new exponent. And for the last integral, the integral of a constant is equal to that constant times x. And of course always add plus c. Now we would simplify until we get our final answer. As a conclusion, our integral is equal to x to the power 4 plus x squared minus x plus c. To check our work, we can take this and differentiate it using the differentiation rules. We would end up with 4x cubed plus 2x minus 1, which is exactly the function we started with. That means this is the correct answer. Here is another example where we have integral of 3e to the power of x plus 5 over x dx. First notice that this is not a power function because there is an x in the exponent. Therefore we cannot use the power rule. Here is the correct solution. We would first divide this up into two integrals and integrate each one separately. The integral of e to the power of x is equal to e to the power of x. And remember that the integral of 1 over x is equal to ln absolute value of x. And of course there is always plus c. Again we can check our work by differentiating this using the differentiation rules we should get back to exactly the function that we started with. Notice that there are no simple rules for anti-differentiating a product or a quotient. That makes them much more difficult to integrate. But in some simple cases you can rewrite the expression and you can use some of the basic rules that we've just learned. Let's try that in a few examples. Here's an example of an integral of a product. Notice that we cannot integrate this by simply integrating each part and multiplying the answers. Instead, we need to try something else. In this particular example, we can expand the brackets to get x cubed plus 2x. Now we can easily integrate this by first dividing it up into two parts and using the power rule on each part. The final answer should be 1 over 4 x to the power 4 plus x squared plus c. Here is another example, this time of a quotient. Remember that there is no simple rule for evaluating the integral of a quotient. But in this example, we can rewrite this quotient into two smaller quotients. Each of these smaller quotients can then be simplified by subtracting the exponents. Here, negative half minus 2 becomes negative 5 over 2. And 5 minus 2 becomes 3. Now we can integrate this by dividing it up to smaller integrals and then using the power rule. As usual, you would add 1 to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. Starting with negative 5 over 2, adding 1, that gives us negative 3 over 2. And for the second integral, 3 plus 1 gives us 4. And of course, always add plus c. 
simplify this and the final answer ends up being negative 4 over 3 times the square root of x cubed minus 3 over 2 times x to the power of 4 plus c. So that's our video on antiderivatives and the indefinite integrals. I hope that you found it helpful. Please take a look at some of our practice problems and give them a try. Thank you for watching and good luck!